Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here. In today's video, we're gonna cover a part that's very dear to all of us here at Track Machine Tools, and we call it the ballpark. It basically looks just like this piece part here, and we use it a lot in our demonstrations as well as in our trainings. And we realized that uh, some of our applications guys, including myself, were finding that customers would go out and try to reproduce this part, and we never made a video for it. So today we're gonna make this video on the KMX, and we're gonna do it in the two axis version, but at the end I'm also gonna cover how to do it in the three axis version. We're not gonna be cutting any parts today, we're just gonna basically show you how to do the program, the tool setup, and show the inspection of the part. So what do you say we get started? First of all, I'm at the main screen, and you'll notice here when I go to program mode that I've already typed in ballpark. One of the reasons I did this is although this has an alpha matrix, which you can type, it is a little bit cumbersome to move the cursor around and select each individual letter or number. Because of that, I would tell you the best thing to do is buy a cheap keyboard, plug it in the back, and then you'll be able to just type it in and you can skip this process. So for now, I'm just gonna push end. And you'll notice in here, it's asking me whether I wanna scale the part at all. Okay, in this case, like most parts, it's one to one, so I don't have to change that. But if I use my down arrow, it's asking me Z end for verify. This does two things. It gives me a place to put what my Z depth is going to be, and that will appear in the run mode when you make the part. And it also helps use the part verification, which shows you a solid model representation of the part when you're completed. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change that to say yes, and then I'm gonna push go to the beginning. And now I'm in here where all the can cycles are for my drilling, my milling, my curved milling, my pockets, my profiles, and all my subroutines. And I'm gonna start out right at the top of the part and looking at the part, what you'll notice is it's a six by six inch block with zero, zero being the very center of the part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is some drilling. So I select position drill. And then in here, it gives me a choice of either being one hole or holes that are on a bolt hole pattern. In this case, the print shows a bolt hole pattern. So when I select that first button, now it gives me a certain amount of questions that I have to answer before I can move forward. So the first question is asking how many holes are in the pattern, there's five followed by the absolute key. X and Y center are zero, zero. You can push zero and then absolute, but if you push no numbers first, it will always select zero for you, so it's a little bit of a shortcut. The print shows you a two and a half inch diameter for the bolt hole radius, but it's asking radius, so it needs to be half of that, 1.25. The angle on the print shows you from zero to the first hole is 45 degrees. Degrees are always counterclockwise from three o'clock. Z end is the depth of the drilling. I'm gonna say minus 0.3. Again, this is just for representation. And I'm gonna to use tool number one as the first tool I'm using. You'll notice in the conversation line, it's already selected. Hit absolute. It shifts over to here for a reference. And if I push the look button, you'll see my zero reference along with the five holes. The look button works like a toggle switch. So if I press it again, it goes away. And now it's asking me, what do you want to do next? Well, the next thing I got to do is that circular pocket in the middle. So I look for a button that says pocket. And once I select that, now it gives me a choice for the shape of the pocket. So it can be a circle, a rectangle, an odd shape, or I can actually face mill, which is removing the material off the top of the piece part. In my case, it's a circle. So again, the questions show up and it says, where is the middle of the pocket? Again, it is zero, zero in the center of the part. The radius for the pocket is actually 0.75, three quarters of an inch. Direction, you'll notice here that it gives me a green box and says push one to go clockwise, two to go counterclockwise. What it's talking about is whether you want to conventionally cut or climb mill the pocket. I prefer to climb mill, so I'm going to select number two. It asks me what I want to leave for a finish cut for the final pass. I'm going to leave 10 thousandths of an inch. Feed rate I want to machine at, I'm going to put it at 30 inches per minute. And I can change the finish feed rate, but in this case, I'm just gonna keep them the same. ZN, the depth of the pocket is minus 0.2. And tool number is gonna to be tool number two because it's a different than the drill bit. I select that, push look, there's my circle inside of my hole pattern. The last thing I'm gonna do is describe how to make the outside of this part. Now in here, you'll see that I have milling events and I have arc events. And although I can use those to describe different parts, there are some shortcuts built in. And one of the best shortcuts is to use profile because profile automatically combines mills and arcs and also adds a finish cut to make it a more complete process. 
So in here it's asking, is that shape a circle, a rectangle, or an odd shape? In this case, what we call an irregular profile is an odd shape. So we're going to build this shape piece by piece, and what it's asking me in the very beginning is where I want to start. I'm going to start at the very top of the part, which is absolute zero in X, and 2.45 inches, which is the size of that large radius. Tool offset, again, it's asking me, is this tool going to go down the center of this path? Is it all going to be to the left? Is it all going to be to the right? We're going around the part in a clockwise direction, so the tool will be on the left. Finish cut, I'm still going to leave 10 thousandths. And then because I can use the same tool for this, I can actually keep all of this the same. And you'll notice in the conversation line, it has all the answers for me, so all I have to do is select the numbers as I go through. Now you also see that I missed the depth, which I should have put in there, minus 0.3. So that's how you get back and forth. And then last but not least, tool number two. And all you'll see up here on the top of the screen is a little blue dot. That's where I'm beginning this profile. So I select the look button again to get out, and now you'll see that everything is either a straight line or a curved line. This first piece is a curved line, so I push AGE arc. In case you're curious what AGE means, it's short for Auto Geometry Engine. It's a real fancy way to say that it does the math help in the background when you need it. So in this case, the direction of the arc with the clockwise or counterclockwise button, I'm going to tell it that it's clockwise in direction. It ends at absolute zero. The Y goes to a negative side of 2.45 inches. The center of the arc is zero, zero. And at that point, you'll see a button turn on that's green and it says OK. It's telling you that I've got all the information I need to make that arc. The rest of the questions in here have to do with the AGE, where it can help you if you don't know all the other answers in the previous part. In this case, I'm just going to push page forward, but I do want to point out that in red, it's telling you the size of the radius and how many degrees of arc. It's figured that out for you. So now I'm going to push the look button. You'll see I have an arc. And if it goes away again, now I have a straight line to cut. So in here it asks one more question. And what that question is is tangent. So what it's asking is, is the part you're about to do tangent to the part you just previously did? The reason for that is if you're missing that dimension where that point of tangency or intersection is, it will help you with the geometry questions and answer them for you. In this case, I have all the information I need, so I can say one or two for yes or no, or if I push absolute, it always chooses no. The x dimension is at that point over to the left side, which it shows you a negative 3.064 inches, and the y dimension of 0.5045. And you'll also see that even though I've got an OK here, it's asking me this question of Conrad. Conrad is short for connective radius or corner radius. It's saying, do you want to blend a radius tangent to the two pieces of geometry? The print shows me 0.841 as that radius, so I'm going to put that in. And again, the length of the line and the angle of the line are not needed, so I'm going to page forward. You'll see they're filled in in red over here. If I push look, you see everything except that radius I described because it doesn't know which way I'm going with the next piece yet. Get back out of look and do my last milling event. It is not tangent. X ends back at the top, which is 0 and 2.45. I have my OK light again, and I'm going to page forward. The last thing I have to do is push this button that says End AGE. That ends the profile so that I can go on and do something else with my other CAN cycles. But in this case, I've got a completed part right here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the Mode key, which takes me back to the main screen, and I'm going to go to the Setup mode. And in the setup mode, I can describe the tool table for the parts. So you'll notice in here that in order to move around in here, I've got left and right buttons, and I've got up and down buttons. So on the first tool, I've already got the information in here. So it's showing me that it's a quarter inch drill bit. But if it wasn't there, I would just punch in the sides. I would come over here, and from this screen, I would give it what size or what type of a tool it is. In this case, number one is a drill bit. Then the size of my end mill. Number four is a finished end mill. And that's complete. Once I'm done with that, I push return. And then I would check the tool path. So this is the first time that it applies the geometry of the tool to what I told it to create. So you'll notice how it spirals out to make the pocket. And all the external part of this got larger, because that's where my tool is moving. Last but not least, we have something in here called part verification. And in part verification, I can define the size of my part. So you'll see in here that it's showing me one corner is minus three and minus three. It's saying the block itself is in half an inch thick. The other corner is a positive three and three, and the absolute top of the part is zero. 
So from there, I go to Make Part, and it's going to show me a representation of the block I just created. And when I push Show Part, it's going to calculate how to make that part. And when it's done, it's going to show you a solid model representation of what it is that you're trying to create. So as you can see right there, there's my completed part. So all I would have left to do would be to hit the mode key, go find my zero on my part, put my tools in there, and make the piece part. So this completes how to make the part in the two-axis KMX. Now if you have a three-axis KMX, there are a few extra questions to answer. So first of all, you'll have Z-Rapid, which is your rapid plane above the part. You'll have your Z-Depth, which is how deep you're drilling or milling. You will have number of passes or number of pecs to break the chips as it goes down. And then you'll have a feed rate for that drilling or that milling. Other than that, it's exactly the same process as what I just showed you. So as you can see, it's very easy to follow. And next time that you want to make the ballpark, you'll have something that you can actually bring up. Don't forget to download the blueprint so you can follow along. And until I see you in the next video, thanks for watching. And as always, keep on tracking.